about to call it a night. Um, we've been out here for a good five hours at least. Uh, we started out with some very calm conditions and uh, it's just uh, gotten worse and worse. Um, any, you know, any other time, you know, without a torpedo motor, I'd, I'd be home sitting watching TV on the couch and uh, this torpedo allowed us to stay out and uh, fight the full moon tide and, uh, and uh, get a nice fish, so. <laughs> Her and let her go. I think the way to do that would be with the uh, torpedo motor. We'll uh, we'll give her a little tow. Back to that. Hey folks, Jeff Little here at Three Bells Outfitters. I'm here with Josh, and Josh is gonna do an install of the Ultralight 403A on this uh, 2019 OB Outback. So. Uh, the three different options that we're going to show, uh, we're going to first do it with locked steering. Uh, in other words, you, you drop the cotter pin through the, the steering triangle and lock the steering in place and you just steer using the rudder. Uh, that's the first option. The second option, uh, some of you have seen in other videos where we connect the steering triangle to the rudder, uh, rudder drum on top. And the third option, we're not going to do today, but I'm going to show you my 2019 Hobie Outback and the unique foot control steering setup uh, that I've done on that rig. So Three Bells is a, a brand new Torquedo dealer and Josh has not done an install yet so I came up to to do the install with him and really show him what um, what each part was for. So let's go ahead and go through uh, we have everything laid out here and we're gonna go right to left starting with our tools um, we do need some the Allen keys here, uh, I got a couple metric ones in there. Um, socket set and uh, scissors. Um, at some point I'm gonna need to grab a lighter to, to, uh, to singe that, uh, this cord here just to have a real clean, uh, unfrayed end. But here are, your, here are the basic parts of the system as you pull it out of the, uh, the case. Uh, you start with the pylon here, that's the motor. Uh, you have your uh, your lithium battery here, waterproof, IP67 rated waterproof. Um, this is a little piece that you can actually, has a USB plug here to recharge your phone. That's about the extent of the, the size device that, um, you know, that you can draw power from this. You cannot run your depth finder off of it. Uh, but certainly recharging your phone is possible with that little USB plug that goes in the charging port. Uh, we've gone ahead and set up the, um, put together the charger here, and we're gonna set this battery up to charge here in a minute. It does come with a, a European plug as well, but obviously we're here in Connecticut in the good US of A, so we're gonna plug that in in a minute. Um, next thing you have is the, the throttle. And I've gone ahead and put the, uh, the magnetic kill switch. Uh, the most important part of the install is that you put this little clip right here onto your life jacket. Uh, this needs to be attached to you. Uh, and then as you're, you're motoring, you put that little magnet on there. So um, two parts that it doesn't come with that we are gonna be using are the the Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then we got some Yak Attack tie down eyelets, which will guide the, uh, this cord here in the rear part of the, the boat um, around the rear well. Uh, it's for your motor lift and your reverse lock. Um, on the front side up near the seat, uh, this is the cleat for the motor lift. That's gonna uh, secure the the motor lift and you use these you'll get a lot of hardware with it but this this little screw here is the one you're using that's threaded correctly for these um, these little track discs and it'll say top or this side up uh, so you use two of those and two of these on this and then you use um, 
one disc and this one's for the um, it's just a line guide for the reverse lock so um, then you have all of these parts and the these are parts that fit onto the you know the pylon you slide one part on first and depending on where the steering is uh, where your steering lines are coming out of the the boat if you're using foot control steering you're either going to have the um, the triangle on the top or the bottom. Um, Josh, you're, you're going to be doing installs on bona fide SS 127s as well. As yep, um, 127s, Outbacks, Pro Anglers. So with the 127, the lines come out the top. So this would actually go on last, and this ring clamp goes on first. Whatever's on the bottom of the the black pivot drum here. Uh, it will get the the quick release so it can slide up and down the shaft length for the, your stow function um, This is the motor lift whatever's on top so you can either have the steering triangle on top or this ring clamp on top and You know whatever whichever one is on top and I mean above this pivot drum is gonna get the motor lift bar so We'll show all that being set up here in a moment. Um, this is the best, <laughs> best parachute cord that they make. It's a really nice, tough, it just, it just stands the test of time. Uh, but that's, you're gonna cut the right sections for your motor lift and reverse lock. Uh, these are two little knobs that you put at the end of that. I just do an overhand knot in the end. And, um, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's the motor lift. And so finally we have what's going to be the first step is the hardware to install this on the Outback. Uh, you have a lot of other hardware in here. This is for if you're drilling holes in a kayak uh, and you know, you're, you're doing a through hole installation. Uh, because uh, we have the inserts in the, the Outback, we're going to take these screws out and uh, we're going to put that bracket on there with these and then the washers that are provided. All right, Josh, go ahead and pull the uh, pull the Phillips head screws out of there. Okay. And we're gonna put that mount on there with the existing little Allen bolts that we got there. Uh, I think this one is 3 16th is the head size. All right, because on this particular setup, we are gonna be using the steering triangle on top uh, because we're gonna we're gonna have the option of connecting it from the um, the rudder drum up to the steering triangle, uh, we're gonna use the. Well, let me show you. I'm gonna have you grab grab that steering triangle and then grab the motor lift bar. No, this this guy. Oh, this guy here. The motor lift bar. Okay. And you see how that fits fits into. The um, they are facing forward. It actually fits right in there. Okay. Okay. And then you're gonna grab. Did you grab? Yeah, you already got that. So yeah, go ahead and put that together. Okay. That's actually gonna go on last, but you're gonna set that aside for now. Okay. And then this is gonna go on first. You're gonna take that quick release hardware and put it through the ring clamp. Okay. Now you're putting that on first, and then we're gonna slide slide it up through this hole right here, and then we'll put the steering triangle on. If you had a boat that, for instance, had you know steering lines coming out the bottom here to this lower portion, then you would put the steering triangle on first, and then this piece would get the the motor lift bar. So that's good uh, you don't want it tight just leave it leave it loose Sl just slide that one down out of the way for now oh, okay and then you, you, all you're gonna do is slide it up through the bottom so this is Nick Hello. <laughs> Nick's filming Tell, tell me what you're filming for. Uh, I'm filming, I do all our online stuff for Three Bells, so I'm filming this up on our YouTube channel. Nice. Ourselves a little better. What's the YouTube channel? 
I believe it's just three bolts out there. So that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> Short and simple, right? <laughs> yep. All right. All right, go ahead and put the steering triangle on now. And you have that, that hooked part facing forward, which is good. Right, I got a little ratchet driver here. That's a, looks like an eight millimeter socket. So four mil millimeter Allen on this side, eight millimeter socket on that side. And yeah, you're just tightening that up, that little ratchet driver. So we're gonna need the, uh, the cleat here two of these little track discs and then two of these little Phillips. So you're gonna put all that together on a track. I would say for most folks, like to have it on the right side. Okay. And usually the throttle's on the left. Um, I, I like to ask the the customer, hey, which, which hand do you hold the uh, your rod in? Mm. And if they say left, you wanna put the throttle on the right if they say right you want to put the throttle on the left um, but for motor lift you put it on the dominant hand side so uh, I think for most folks we're gonna put it say right in here okay I can only assume it goes this way it does and you're gonna thread the, the line through there it comes out and then you got the little cleat there okay so now you're gonna take this and just kind of unravel it and you're gonna run run a short end through well you got to do both of them so just pick a side and I'm gonna get those one of those little knobs for you okay all right so is reverse lock red or black I would say red reverse okay sounds right right yep just do an overhand knot That's good. Now we're going to use the uh, the Yak Attack tie down eyelets here. If you can put one of those back here and one back here, this just guides the line, both the both the motor lift and then the reverse lock around your gear, so you don't have a line that's rubbing on, you know, whether whether it's your live well your h crate whatever you have in that real well uh, you don't you don't need these lines rubbing on it so these these tie down eyelets really make it a nice nice install so and then from there we're gonna go to that hole right there So you probably want to give yourself, I don't know, two, three inches up there of slack. Okay. Just flop that over the edge. That's all you want. You don't want a lot more. Okay. And then as we come back here, here's your scissors, your little clip, and uh, I'll give you this lighter, and you're just going to singe it after you cut it. We'll do this one while we're at it. Okay, yeah, it looks good. Should be good. I don't know if you call it a really special knot, but it's the one that I, that I always do. I guess it's a noose. Oh, okay. Yep. That one holds. A noose. All right, and then that just connects there. That way, when you when you're doing the quick release and, and taking this off for transport, you can just pop that off. Now, some folks like to swap those out with the um, the night eyes S beaners um, on on all four of the the places where you need that that particular um, attachment. So we have. We have four of those, and we've put one of them in. The other three go on the steering triangle, 
on both sides, which we'll do in a moment. And the other one goes to what we have to run now, which is the motor lift. And that's, you can see now why some folks prefer the, the Night Eyes S Beaner. Uh, it's just, it works, but the Night Eyes S Beaner is just a little bit more finger friendly. Okay. And that motor lift looks like like that. We're going to run it up here through the cleat. And um, I'll go ahead and cut it for the right length. I think the right length is about like that. So we're almost there if we're just doing the um, Steering. The only part that's missing in the lock steering is mashing this cotter pin down in that hole. Yeah, and that keeps it from turning. In which case, you can basically to run it down. Yep, you're just steering with the rudder, and the, the motor is fixed. But we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to go ahead and connect these these lines to the uh, the pivot drum. So before we do that, let's go ahead and do. You're going to put the um, the throttle mount on. Okay, before we put the the base on there, uh, you're going to put the data cable in there. So go ahead and line up the uh, the pins. You're going to want to. Let's do this. I'm, here's a little trick. You're going to run the cord through that thing first okay and pop it into place and then you're going to do that part i see we'll pop it down in there and is it is that turning fairly easily yeah it feels like it's threading on good if it's difficult if it's you know if there's any resistance when you're turning it uh you're you've cross-threaded it so it looks like you have it on there right yeah so go feels, ahead and put the right. uh, put the base on there yeah. And you got your two screws and they should line up with the, the holes there. So Josh is just putting the, the lock and load base there on the side that makes sense for him. Opposite his rod holding hand and then go ahead and place that, uh, that throttle on there. Good to go. Simple as that. And then you're gonna put that, where's that, that orange thing go? Where's this magnet go? Oh, we know where that goes. On your life jacket. That's right. It's on the life jacket and right there. Cool. So this is the Torquedo Ultralight's best friend, WD-40. Uh, the reason why we use the WD-40 on both the plugs and the terminals and I just squirt a little bit in there. Uh, we'll actually do a little bit on the, um, the threads too. It helps it, you know, just thread on there better. better. But the, the really the most important thing is that when these pins go in there, that they, have, they seat very nicely and they connect. Uh, when you turn this, it shouldn't be hard to turn. If it is, that means you haven't seated it properly. It should be very easy. That's easy. When I first tried it, there was resistance. If there's resistance, stop, reseat the plug, and continue. But it's very easy here. So I have the main, um, you know, the, the motor cable in there. And then we're going to come over here to this one. And I'd say periodically, every couple trips, just give it a little squirt in, in the data one there too. I've had folks ask, what about dielectric grease? Well, if you're, you're taking something and mashing dielectric grease down there like a Q-tip, you run the risk of bending the pins. If you bend the pin out of the way, we've got problems. So that's why I think the, the service techs and I both recommend um, the WD-40 because the aerosol helps get it in there and um, it should just thread on very nicely. 
Now, this battery, this 320 watt hour battery, uh, is, is one of two options. You have the 320 watt hour battery or a 915. For the demo motor we have, it's a 320 watt hour battery uh, that's been shipped to us, has not been charged yet. We'll see what kind of charge. We have 28% of that battery remaining. So we'll go ahead and put that on the charger and I wanna show what, um, what lights there are that tells you, you know, this is charging and this is full. So we've plugged our charger into the wall there and uh, I can tell that the charger's in good shape. You get that little weak green light there saying that this is functional. Uh, but when we plug it in there, we're gonna look at this light here and it's gonna start blinking red. That blinking red means that it's accepting a charge. Once it turns solid red, uh, then the battery's full and it's ready to use. Test that the first time, we're good to go. So let's, let's come back here and I want to just show you a few things on the display. Uh, the remaining battery percentage is here. Your speed and it's actually set up in kilometers per hour, I will change that in a moment, is here because there's a GPS unit in the battery that helps tell your speed. This is your watt draw, and then the, this number here would be your remaining range. So as we start using power, you'll see this watt draw come up, and it'll go up as high as 400 because it's a 400 watt motor. If we were actually moving the boat, you'd see a speed, and you'd also see a corresponding remaining range there. If, for instance, uh, this says that you have 5.7 miles of remaining range and you know that you need to go six, you back it off of here and that number will grow and you'll know the range that, uh, that you have remaining. So what's happening here is Josh has loosened this screw right here and just enough to get, to get this Hobie Cord. How many times you go around? Twice? I went around twice. Okay. Go ahead and tighten that on there. Okay. And then you're going to trim the, the tag end that you don't need. You're going to repeat the process. And then this is just going to connect right up to the steering triangle there. I've set up countless, countless of these motors and I still make the same mistake again and again. And this one, I just, I didn't stop uh, Josh from, from doing it. but. What we have here, I'm gonna lower this. let's look at the steering triangle. This is installed incorrectly and I let it happen. Why is it incorrect? Because the wings of this are gonna slide forward and hit, actually I gotta take the cotter pin out first, but it's gonna swing forward and actually hit the mount. And we want better steering radius than that. Um, what needs to happen is that this needs to come off and be uh, installed the other way around such that this part is the spacer that's touching this and the wings are elevated a little bit. So I'm gonna correct the mistake I made before and uh, we'll get that on there right. I'm gonna get this as tight as I can to make sure we have no steering triangle slip. But you can already see that this is going to clear it out, and you have, you know, you have that extra range of rotation. Are we going to get it out of the steering drum? I'm not sure, but it's you're certainly not going to be, you know, hitting that against the frame. It'll, it'll, you know, come forward. You have good, good rotation. So let's go ahead and finish this up, and uh, then uh, we'll hopefully get this out in the water here pretty quickly. All right, I'm out here with Josh at a launch. We're getting ready to go catch some fish. Uh, we talked about in the, the first section, three different uh, steering setups with the, the Torquedo Ultralight on the, the Hobie Outback. Uh, we, we, we rigged up, well first we, what, we locked the steering, we showed how to do that in the first part, and then we did the, the steering with the, the steering triangle hooked up to the rudder. Um, the rudder drum. So the last part, I'm going to hand the camera over to, to Josh and I want to show you my setup. Um, I wanted to do foot control steering in a way that the the Mirage Drive had its place 
and then I had foot control steering here. So this is this is something that Trade Innovative Sportsman made for me. I said I have an idea, and what this is are the spectra lines going into the hull. Underneath the hull, there is a Yak Attack stealth pulley right there. So this line goes around here underneath and then straight back. And as it comes out the back, I'll show you how this is steering the whole setup. Uh, as you, you know, you see it's foot control steering. And it, that spectral line is coming out here and just connecting with the, the steering triangle. So, so far I've used this quite a bit in, uh, in a river setting. Uh, and it's it's been a good setup for me. Uh, this is my first time using it out in uh, You know in salt water, so we'll give it a go and uh, we'll, we'll go catch some fish filming somebody uh, catching a fish right now. Yeah, let me, uh, I'll give you a holler. Can, can it wait till tomorrow? Okay, thanks, see ya, bye. What are you using there? This is a 24-7 uh, Lures Mully. This is uh, one of my go-to topwater plugs right here. Doesn't appear to be happening right here. So where are we headed? Okay, I'll follow you. Alright. What do you got? fish out on these rocks and you, there's a lot of bait fish through here and I threw the, the swim bait up in there. It has a one ounce head on a 10 knot hook and uh, if top water isn't, isn't happening going a little bit deeper with the swim bait I was letting it sink to the bottom and it was getting bumped on the way down but pop 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 I was just jigging with it and then swimming it a little bit. I got 12 pound leader, huh? <laughs> oh wow. Let's up for Albies. Oh. Sorry. I forgot I had my uh motor going. Come on, buddy. I'm gonna pop that right here. Cooperate. Little guy. Fun on lake gear, you know. What do you hit? Hit a uh, jig and plastic. Nice. A zoom fluke with a half ounce head. Choking it. Yeah. Skinny little dude. Nice catch, man. Yeah. Get bigger. <laughs> Ray Charles without my fish finder. 
<laughs> Did you have one take it? I did. It was a good one. How do you know? The amount of water it displaces behind the plug and how big the splash is. Uh, it sort of rolled on it and I don't think I even, I don't think I even connected with the fish whatsoever. But uh, oh. that's, uh, that's part of the game when you're top water plugging. Stay on them. So one thing I'm learning about the Torquedo is the, uh, the subtle adjustments you can make. Um, I'm so used to my Mirage Drive and when I first started using this thing, I was a little skeptical. But uh, the more you use it, the more comfortable you get just making those minor adjustments with the wind and the current and everything. Um, staying on a spot, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. He's pulling you. You got, a, you got a special name for those, don't you? I do. We won't say what that is. <laughs> yep, he's of that variety as well. <laughs> Alright, Jeff has a good fish. Better. Come here, chunky. Chunky fish. So, I had one break me off in the rocks and uh, I had to retie. So I went back to the same bait, just diff just rigged a little bit differently. Um, I went with just instead of the, uh, with the chin locks, Z Man chin locks, I went with. Um, I forget what this is. The chin locks is what I had. It was more of like a weedless type setup. This yep. one's a head lock. So. Oh, okay. I like those. Do you use those? I do. Yeah. So these are the mag swims. And uh, I switched from using the chin locks. I was, I was thinking that's going to come through those rocks back there a little bit cleaner. Uh, but I broke one off. I broke off my one one ouncer. I got a couple half ounces, but these are three quarters and uh, I figured That's gonna grab that plastic and it have a nice natural head down um, You know Drop so we'll see but two different options for the mag swims I'm gonna stick with this one for a while because it just caught something No Josh has a good one. He was throwing a, an eel of some sort. Not a live eel, but a, like a soft plastic one. And uh, looks like he just used the motor to catch up with this fish. Um, yeah. It's a good one. Oh! 
That's a beast. That's a beauty. Nice job, man. That's on the eel, you said? It's actually just on a small jig in plastic. Oh. Caught me by surprise, that's for sure. Nice job, man. <laughs> nice catch. How big you think? Well, we'll find out. Uh, 40... Forty-two. Forty-two! Nice job, man! So that's actually, uh... A broken piece of one of those gravity tackle GT eels, and uh, I just sca scavenged it and uh, put it on a three-quarter ounce jig head, and and here we are. Nice. So, turn her towards me. Hold her up real nice. Beautiful work, Josh. Very nice. Knew we could do it. <laughs> We're about to call it a night. Um, we've been out here for a good five hours at least. Uh, we started out with some very calm conditions, and uh, it's just uh, gotten worse and worse. Um, and you know, any other time, you know, without a torpedo motor, I'd, I'd be home sitting watching TV on the couch. And uh, this torpedo allowed us to stay out and uh, fight the full moon tide and uh, and uh, get a nice fish. So. <laughs> Her and let her go. I think the way to do that would be with the uh, torpedo motor. We'll uh, we'll give her a little tow. Back to that. Utilize the torpedo motor to uh, revive this fish. the gills. Be conscious of what the fish is doing in the water. You want to make sure that fish is sitting upright. You want to keep an eye on their dorsal fin. Once that dorsal starts to sort of stand up and they start to pull away from you, you know it's time to let them go. Nice job, man. Excellent. <laughs>